I recently watched Moana with my family and when I saw the first scene about Te Fiti's heart, I immediately thought Tea Light Holder, just as anyone else would, I assume. I am Dominic and this is Dominic's Woodworks. But as you probably gathered from the title, this project was a fail and I have not felt like tackling it again. Still, I wanted to share this in the hopes that you can get inspired by what I did as well as by what I did not. So let's start at the beginning. I use a piece of plywood for this. I was aware that what I had in mind would seriously diminish the structural integrity of the wood, so using plywood seemed like a pretty stable idea. I sketched out what I wanted to end up with, basically a piece of wall with a spiral pattern on it, backlit, in my case by a tea light. LEDs would work just as well, except that they would utterly destroy any flair that the ancient and arcane art of tea lighting brings to anything associated with its illuminating magic, and it would also make it a lot more portable and arguably a bit safer. I think that thought somehow got away from me. Where was I? Ah yes. After I sketched with a pencil and traced the final design with a much less humble felt tip marker, I used my handheld router with a V-bit to ingrain the pattern into the plywood. Since the invention of transparent wood has seen quite a few setbacks in recent years, I needed openings for my design to work. Routing a channel along the spiral would probably qualify, but it would also leave me with a piece as fragile as the ego of a kleptomanic crab at the bottom of the ocean. I used my miter saw, which came with a depth stop for non-through cuts. Using trial and error, I figured out how deep I needed to go in order to meet the router channel from the back. But I also tried to stay as shallow as possible in order to leave as much material on there as I could. Here I go haywire with cuts, basically slicing and dicing through all that stability that I wanted so desperately to preserve. Now comes the part that I thought would turn out great. Little did I know that I had not thought this through. Then again, if I had, you would not be watching this video. But a much better one. I wanted to create a green light effect using special plastic that comes in granular form and is meant to be molten for such and similar effects. I used green and transparent to fill up the V groove and I found that in some places intersecting relief cuts from the back would allow the grains to fall through. Still, not actually a problem. I put the piece into the toaster oven in order to melt the plastic and as a word of caution, if you do this, use a piece of sacrificial paper or wood underneath because I did not at first and put it into a small pan that still had wax residue from another project in it. What a smoking mess. Which is probably also why things went downhill from here. Since it smelled rather bad, I put the oven outside. And I might also have forgotten to check up on it for a little while. Half an hour at most. Or at least. A too long story short, at some point the heat became sufficient to melt the plastic. It also saw fit to blacken it and while it was added, it darkened the wood by a considerable amount too. But that little bit extra that happened in the heat of the moment was the glue used in the plywood failing. Several layers came off without incentive, cut to small pieces as they were already, and more would follow with a little coercion, that is, touch. I hesitate to call it the usual, aka the finished product, because it's more like the ruined product. And the main problem that I'm having is the likening of the plastic up here. It doesn't come out that well, but it, it kind of, it charred the whole thing. Also, there are bubbles in there and it's just not, not really pretty. And I'm saying that because the rest, the, the blackening, it, could actually have come in handy. It doesn't look that bad, the, the wood at least. And the, the back side, I could have worked with that. I think if the, yeah, and again the blackening, if that wouldn't have happened, I would have taken epoxy to stabilize this and I would have removed as many pieces as I could to open up the openings further so that more light can go through. And I think the key to saving this project is replacing this granular plastic with epoxy. Tinted epoxy, router groove, fill in the epoxy, let it cure properly, 
then flip it over and I think I'd actually use some kind of toner transfer or printing method to put the spiral on here or make one from wire and trace it and then take that, invert it so I get the same spiral on here and then I would, once the epoxy is cured, route a channel in here and basically open up the whole thing without any stability issues. So that being said, I know how I would do it, but I'm not going to do it because I have so many ideas and projects that are waiting to be finished. And it was a nice learning experience and I hope you can learn from it, take something away or actually make this, but I won't. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was from the making perspective, not that enjoyable in the end. If you have any comments, suggestions or ideas about what I should have done better, and I believe there's a lot, leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoy what I'm doing, even when I'm failing, please subscribe to my channel and I'd also appreciate if you shared this in my other videos. That would help me out a lot. Thank you for watching and as always, remember to be inspired. I hesitate to call this... What?